Survivor 46 premiered on February 28th, 2024, as this would be the sixth season of the new era, and the second season in a row to feature 90 minute episodes, which was a massive plus for 45, and fans hope for the same this season. The three tribes immediately competed for reward, with the losers getting stuck with either Sweats or Savvy. Nami came in first and won Flint and Supplies, while Sika came in second and chose Savvy, leaving Yanu stuck with Sweat. But that's okay though, they have two clear athletic guys in Q and Jelensky. It will obviously be tough, but I'm sure they'll complete it. It said that this task takes several hours, but it looks like we only have four hours. Last I checked, several means seven, not four. So we call it quiz. So with that time that's left, you don't think we can finish it? I don't. Ben and Charlie also failed the savvy task, but despite this, Charlie was able to get in good with both the guys and the girls, and made a Malcolm Denise esque alliance with Maria, which put the two directly in the middle of both sides. On Nami, the two polar opposites of Tevin and Hunter formed a strong bond, while Randon targeted Venus for potentially looking for an idol. In usual New Era premiere tradition, the tribes had to send one person to go on a journey, with Jelensky, Tevin, and Maria being the ones to go from each respective tribe. The task was that there would be three cards, with one person holding the torch card, and the other two would have to convince that person that they didn't have the vote card. Maria will get the torch card, thus we got an epic battle between Tevin and Jelinski, as neither person wanted to lose their vote. Well, I'll, I'll be honest, because I'm not deceptive at all. I, I do have the score card. Lord have mercy. He literally folded his cards. Back at camp, Jelensky flat out told Yanu that he folded and lost his vote right away, in hopes he could work with Tevin and Maria going forward, despite that being super far away. At a really cool mini challenge involving a 500 pound gecko, Nami and Siko would come out on top, sending Yanu to the first tribal of the season. Knowing it was either him or the weakling Jess who was suffering big time from the element, Jelensky would fight hard to stay with a convincing plea. I mean, I know our names are on the block. My name is on the block? I just figured because we were at the puzzle. I did want to just chill out for a little bit. Really? You think that's better for your game than going where everyone is? <laughs> After Tiffany found an idol, the core four of her, Kenzie, Bono, and Q had to indeed decide between Jess and Jelinski, as despite all the bad Jelinski had done, again, Jess was really suffering. In the end though, the tribe couldn't overlook Jelinski essentially giving up three times, ending an all-time iconic first boot downfall with him being voted out in a unanimous vote. Jelinski, the tribe has spoken. Episode 2 now, a two hour episode, and man did it show, as scenes like this were the best we had the show on Sega. Struggle with that. Clean. <laughs> Ain't my bitch. <laughs> Some kind of monster. We are never ever getting back together. Like ever. The house that Jack built. All too well. Until it sleeps. All too well 10 minute version. Ooh. Allowed. On Nami, Randon would find the Beware advantage, which was a clue to the idol, and thus, feeling like it was the two of them on the bottom, he offered an alliance with Venus despite being the one that was targeting her last episode. On Yanu, the majority three was Q, Tiffany, and Kenzie. However, while Q and Tiffany were solid, Kenzie was willing to play both sides, talking with Jess and Banu about possibly breaking up Tiff and Q. However, in desperation, Jess would instead rattle out Kenzie to Q, making him a bit wary of Kenzie. At the media challenge though, Yanu would once again lose, and they unfairly put a lot of the blame on Jess, and thus, she was the easy target for the night. However, scared of her shot in the dark, the tribe made her find a fake idol, with Q in the end giving her one as a quote, sign of trust. And at Tribal, a helpless Jess played her fake idol, which is of course no use, and in the end, would be sent home in a unanimous vote. Jess? You okay? This, this whole thing is so surreal. Yeah, I'm okay. The tribe has spoken. Episode 3 and 4 now, arguably one of the worst two episode stretches in Survivor history, and that's mostly due to one man, with that man being Banu. Knowing he was on the bottom of Yanu now, Banu got desperate and paranoid, but his whiny behavior only made things worse. On Nami, Randy was feeling numb and was unable to move his hand, causing Medic to check on him. After Yanu once again lost, Banu was given one last chance as he would go on a journey with Liz and Ben, as all three had the choice to compete in a challenge for an advantage, but in the end, the two competing and Ben and Banu both would lose a challenge, thus losing their votes at the next tribal, and in Banu's case, he couldn't play the shot in the dark either, meaning he was completely helpless for that night. But then, he was given a second chance chance of a lifetime. Random was pulled from the game. He's had a nerve situation. There was a lot of concern. One person's loss is another person's gain. No tribal council tonight. My prayer's been answered. I'm not going home tonight. Saying my goodbyes, ready to go. And look what happened, miracle! So I mean, the survivor guys were clearly watching over Bono here. Certainly he'll make the most of it, right? 
I mean, Yana would even win the next reward challenge, so maybe they'll win their way to the merge. And he got it! Sega wins immunity! Sending Yanu back to Tribal Council, where the fourth person will be voted out of this game. Tiff, you need to help me, Tiff. Please. No, please, Bunny. Please, no. Tiff. Get up off your knees. Tiff, you need no, to help me. get up. First you of all, know. I'm not going to talk to you if you're on your knees. Bonnie, the tribe is spoken. So yeah, after a grueling two-hour episode in episode two, episodes three and four would essentially be dedicated to getting rid of Banu. Literally getting more confessionals this season than Parvi did in Micronesia. Nothing against Banu, but man, what a brutal stretch of episodes. But it's safe to say, this season would vastly improve going forward. One thing that I didn't mention that happened in episode four on Sega was that the tribe found the Beware Advantage, but it had been moved to cause chaos, with Jem being the person that was causing his paranoia. However, this backfired, as Tim and Melee recognized that she was likely the one doing this, making her his target. And on Nami, Hunter would be the one to finally find the Beware Advantage. At the immunity challenge, Yanu would finally win their first immunity challenge after five attempts, with Sega being the one to go to their first tribal. Before tribal, there would be one more journey, with Q, Hunter, and Tim being the ones to go, where they agreed to Alliance of Six come to merge, as they would align with their closest respective allies. Hunter would be the one to compete for an advantage, with Survivor Super fans losing their minds as he failed to put the seasons in order by logos, thus losing his vote. The Sega woman switched her vote from Tim to Ben, feeling like the latter was much more threatening, while Ben and Tim targeted the untrustworthy gem, leaving the duo of Maria and Charlie in the middle. In the end, Jem's chaotic gameplay came back to bite her, as Maria and Charlie sided with the guys, sending Jem home with an idol in her pocket, which safe to say, won't be the last time I'll be saying that in this video. Jem, the tribe has spoken. Episode 6 begins with the three tribes coming together, but right before then, Hunter would find Nami's idol. Knowing that Earn the Merge challenge was coming, nobody wanted to say any names, but it was clear that the Yano 3 were in the middle of Siga and Nami. And at the media challenge, the dominant team of Hunter, Tevin, Q, Kenzie, Ben, and Tim won the challenge, with Tiffany also being safe as she chose in the win, leaving the other six on the chopping block. Despite Venus being the most annoying, the Yano 3 realized this was more of a reason to keep the Namis together, as they clearly hated each other, and break up the much tighter Siga, with the target being Mariah after she still was Stiga strong despite being left out of the gem boat. And at Tribal, knowing she was in trouble, she attempted to pull Caleb with a successful shot in the dark play, but it was no use, and she would be sent home in a 10-1 vote. Mariah, the tribe is spoken. In the same twist from last season, the final 12 were split in the two teams of six, and there would be two individual muni winners, but the person who lasted the overall longest would send their team the tribal second, meaning the person voted out from the first team wouldn't make the jury. Kenzie and Maria would win immunity, with Maria lasting the overall longest. The first group consisted of the Yano 3 and Hunter, Ben, and Tim. While Hunter was an obvious outsider, Tim became a target for Q when he told him that he hadn't yet told Maria of the six going forward. This would end up costing him, as the Yanus picked up a desperate Hunter to blindside Tim, unfortunately missing out on the jury. Tim, the tribe has spoken. Thank you. On the other tribe, Charlie appeared like the easy vote since he was the only Seagull vulnerable, but since Nami indeed hated each other, they began to target one another, as Soda wanted the annoying Venus gone, while Tevin recognized Soda was a massive social threat. This ironically would leave the Seagulls of Maria and Charlie in the middle. In the end, while Tevin saved face and voted for Venus, the tribe recognized how threatening Soda was, blindsiding her in a 4-2 vote, and making her the first member of the jury. How you crush it, man? Soda? The tribe is <laughs> Still wanting the six, Q recruited Charlie to join. However, when Q found out from Tevin that Tiffany had talked about blindside Maria, the six was officially unsavable, and Tiffany became the new target for Q. Man, Q sure does love having himself some targets. Due to all the paranoia, for the first time in the new era, the tribe couldn't make a deal with Jeff for more rice, as immunity was more important for most, but Challenge Beast Hunter would be the one to come out on top to win his first immunity of the season. It seemed like a done deal that Tiffany was gone since Q was running things, but out of nowhere, Liz targeted Tevin, seeing firsthand how much of a threat he was, with many people being on board for this. However, feeling like he was no longer in control and wanting to sacrifice himself to save Tevin, Q offered himself at Tribal, leading to absolute confusion. But I'm gonna ask everybody to vote for me. Then all of these nine folks are going back to camp today. Is this news to everyone? Yes. What is yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Totally. Q, what are you talking about? He is saying, vote me out. Is that clear to everyone? Yeah. Yeah. It's clear, yeah, but it's like clear, what? But it doesn't, but it doesn't make, make sense. Why? The math isn't mathing. Is this not the dumbest? 
I feel like he just doesn't want to be on the bottom. Why is he acting like this? Why are we supposed to be on the same page? This is why you're just sitting here. Come on, look what's happening. This man could be anyone. This does not rock. After all the chaos, the tribe went along with the plan going in the tribal and voting for Tevane, with even Q joining despite wanting a Lily quit to save him, and thus, Tevane will become the second member of the jury, going home in an A2 vote. Oh, this is so exciting, Jeff. <laughs> How about it? Tevin, yeah? The tribe has spoken. Everyone was beyond furious at Q for nearly messing up everyone's gameplay just so he could ride off into the sunset, thus making him an easy target. However, Hunter also knew he was in trouble, as he was the only one who voted with Tevin at the previous tribal, and of course, was the biggest physical threat in the game. The nine players were split into three teams of three, and the first team to win would battle for immunity. The team of Hunter, Charlie, and Maria would win, with Charlie surprisingly being Hunter to win his first immunity. Despite Hunter and Q being clear and open targets, Kenzie out of nowhere wanted to make a big move and turn on Tiffany, with the tribe being more than down for this, but many got spooked when Tiffany threatened to play her idol to get the target off her, as it was a public idol. So instead, the tribe went back to the easy split vote plan on Hunter and Q, with Hunter being the target. I mean, this is obvious as it could be. Hunter literally knows he's on the bottom and getting votes. Surely he'll play his idol, right? If anybody has an advantage or an idol and you want to play it, now would be the time to do so. All right, I'll read the votes. Tenth person voted out and the third member of our jury. Hunter, that's four, that's enough. Need to bring me your torch? There we go. Hunter, the tribe has spoken. Yes, they have. Episode 10 now, arguably one of the greatest episodes of the new era, and that was due to an unlikely candidate in Liz, as the reward for that challenge in Applebee's held a special place in her heart, as she and her daughter always went there before the newest Survivor episode. And now here she was on Survivor, literally not being able to eat anything due to her allergies, with a chance to enjoy her special food. However, the winner of the challenge in queue had other ideas. Liz, she hasn't eaten uh, in almost 18 days, but Kenzie was with me since day one, so... My decision is basically going to be to bring Kenzie. Oh my God. Come on over, Kenzie. Liz, do you feel comfortable talking about what you're feeling? I'm pissed! Q, you almost blew up my whole game! You overshadowed everything I was trying to do! I didn't say nothing! Not only was the audience upset with Q being so heartless, but he couldn't even realign with his Yanu allies, as they wanted nothing to do with him going forward. And after Charlie won his second straight immunity, Q looked all but done for her. However, Maria and Charlie felt this would be the perfect time to blindside Tiffany with an idol in her pocket, since Q seemed like such an obvious target. They got their Sega ally Ben and of course Q on board, but needed one other person. Kenzie was a no despite Ridge being the one who wanted Tiff out, and between Venus and Liz, they felt that Liz was the better option. And unbelievably, despite Q literally causing her to break down, she played with her head over her heart and joined the Sika 3 and Q to blindside Tiffany, the second straight person to leave with an idol in their pocket, despite it literally being a public idol. Tiff, the tribe has spoken. Thank you. Despite pulling off an epic blindside, the tribe began to realize how much of a threat Maria was, with even Charlie ready to turn on his number one since day one. Knowing there was now another idol out there, the final seven all began to search, with Venus of all people being the one to find it. In a must-win challenge for Maria, the 47-year-old mom would come out on top to win her second immunity of the season. However, she would do an awful job of picking who to come with her for reward, as she made a big scene of it all, but many players saw through this and realized she was just trying to play jury management. Nonetheless, the two she chose for reward and Ben and Q agreed to target Venus, as nobody could trust her going forward in this endgame, while Venus targeted Q for those very reasons, leaving Charlie in the middle. As he knew Venus was more threatening than Q, but also was scared to continue to align with Ben and Maria this late in the game, as he wanted to separate himself. At Tribal though, everyone in the end would be on board with the Venus plan, and unbelievably, despite two straight people going home with idols and likely knowing she was getting votes, Venus would choose not to play her idol, and would become the third straight person to leave with an idol in her pocket, and the fourth person overall this season, both being records. Venus, the tribe has spoken. The penultimate episode of the season would begin with Charlie winning the reward challenge, and he would bring the two people who hadn't ate pizza at the last reward in Kenzie and Liz, where the three not only got Chinese food and letters from home, but they also agreed they had to break up Q and Maria. But back at camp, Q would be the one to find the read an idol. He told Maria about this, and after some talk, the two agreed that Charlie had to be the one to go home. 
And after Maria went immunity, it seemed that Charlie was done for since the majority was targeting Q, who had an idol. And yeah, take a wild guess at what's gonna happen. If anybody has an advantage or an idol and you wanna play it, now would be the time to do so. All right, I'll read the votes. 13th person voted out and the sixth member of our jury. Q, need to bring me a torch? Q, the tribe has spoken. So despite this episode basically being sent around Maria and Charlie turning on each other after being a dominant duo all game, neither would go home. And Q, the decoy target of the previous three players who went home with an idol, would now be the fourth person in a row to go home with an idol in their pocket. Seriously, did this season actually happen? I'm convinced it's a fever dream. It's the finale now of this insane season, with Maria now knowing she was in serious trouble after being blindsided and desperately try to realign with Charlie. However, everyone knew that Maria had to be the one to go, and at the immunity challenge, Liz would even help out Kenzie to finish the challenge, win her second immunity of the season. Maria desperately tried to campaign for Ben, but it was no use, as the biggest jury threat would be sent to the jury in a unanimous vote. Maria, the tribe has spoken. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure, you guys. Love you. It's the final immunity challenge now, and despite the constant panic attacks and lack of sleep since the merge, Ben was surprised to be the one to come out on top to win his first immunity of the season. For some reason, Ben thought that Liz had played the best game, and it came down to who would go against her, with him choosing Kenzie in the end. And as Liz predicted, she had no chance at fire due to yet another condition in her joints, and thus, Kenzie would earn her spot in the final three, making Liz the final member of the jury. I'm sure she can go home and cry in all her fat stacks of cash. God bless America. <laughs> Liz, the tribe has spoken. <sighs> Charlie, Kenzie, and Ben now against the jury of eight. All three had pretty good Final Travel Council performances as they owned the games they played. It ultimately came down to Charlie who played the better strategic game and Kenzie who played the better social game. In the end, the social game came out on top, with Kenzie's winning vote in fact coming from Charlie's number one ally in Maria, winning Survivor 46 in a 5-3 vote to become the 46th sole survivor. The winner of Survivor 46. So there you have it guys, Survivor 46 Retrospective. Let me know if you guys think this is indeed the best season of the new era, and in general, where you have this season in your season rankings. Be sure to like and subscribe, and check out my old school retrospectives as well. And with all that said, take care everyone, and I'll see you next time.